second step before we actually jump into the planning is to make sure, it's a, a, a pause and check moment, do we have a clearly articulated statement of vision, mission, and values? Where are, what is it that we hope to achieve? How are we going to get it done? Or not how are we going to get it done? What are the kinds of activities that we do on a regular basis that help us achieve our mission? And what are the values that underlie our work? So if I can, I'd like to pause just a second and explore vision, mission, and values, um, just in terms of a definition. A vision statement is typically short, three sentences, 50, no more than 100 words, that describes in an essential way what the purpose of the organization is. What is the change we hope to create in the world? Mission statement is slightly different. It is a list of maybe 10 ongoing key activities in the organization that never know completion, but they're the things that we do in an ongoing way to um, deliver our vision. So if my vision as a housewife is to have a um, warm and welcoming home that's a place of um, rest and peace for my family and a welcoming environment for our friends and neighbors when they visit, and that's my vision, then what are the ongoing things that I do that never know completion that help me carry out my vision? It's not remodel the bathroom, because you do that and then you check it off. But there are some other things that I might list as a housekeeper that are ongoing, never-ending kinds of things that might allow me to achieve that. So too in our schools, we have ongoing kinds of activities that we regularly do that are never completed, um, but that are critical to our ability to carry out um, and deliver our vision. Third thing, value statements. What are the things that we believe that um, underlie the way in which we work? So are we committed to um, offering the education to students in a variety of social, cultural, economic, and religious backgrounds? Is that a base value that we want our school to represent? Um, do we intend to teach in a way that develops um, reverence for the earth and respect for earth's people? That would be an underlying value. So that informs the way in which we teach science, right? So those kinds of things. So it's very, very helpful to an organization, and I would suggest actually essential for effective strategic planning, to have a clear statement like that. What change do we want to create in the world? What are the things that we do on an ongoing basis to affect that change? And what are the values that underlie the way in which we work? Fair enough? In a, in a um, strategic plan, um, within the definitions you just gave, would you place um, an, another name or within one of those things uh, a picture, uh, the story of at the end of this time period we're setting for it, this is the picture of the school where you might list some specifics as far as number that, of grades, number of students, this is what it will look like. Th uh, that's, an imagination that may be actually some of the end product of your strategic planning. Mm -hmm. But at this point, um, you're, you're still in a more general sense. Um, what is our vision? If you can, whatever you can articulate in fewer than 100 words, mm -hmm. three or four sentences, we're trying to get to the 
essential. Mm -hmm. What is the key difference you're trying to make in the world? So that's more of what you're calling an end statement, um, perhaps. I, I'm calling it that a vision statement. No, I, I mean uh, the other. The, the other, it, mm -hmm. um, what, that fuller description mm -hmm. is an end statement. Okay. Right. Um, so we need to get our plan for our planning together. We need to stop, check, make sure that we've got a clear statement of vision, mission, and values so we know what we're trying to achieve, how we're going to do it, and um, what's important to us from a values perspective. Uh, and then we take a little bit of time to assess the environment. So um, we may want to identify if we've had any existing strategies that we've been working from, what are they? Where do we stand with them? Um, are we on track with them? What's going on there? Um, we want, may want to gather input on a variety of issues from a larger number of stakeholders. So we may make the decision, boy, we can't do this process by inviting every single parent in the school community and every teacher and every board member to a two-day meeting, but we want to do it with a smaller group, but we still want to allow for input then is there um, a means for gathering input from the larger community? It's a question we can ask ourselves. Um, we may want to pause and ask for input from external stakeholders. Um, do we ever have conversations with um, um, political representatives in our community, um, major businesses that we might be engaged with. Are there other people outside of our immediate parent and faculty staff community with whom we might have a productive conversation who might shed some light on um, the world around us, the world in which we're operating? Do you have a comment? Yeah, my question was in regards to that. What are Osno's uh, recommendations as to how you engage with external sources like politicians or <coughs> these businesses you're talking about as far as what their contribution is? Well, I, I don't know that there are specific Osna recommendations. I can say from my perspective that um, at this point, as you're trying to gain information, um, a strategic planning process does not just look at what do we know about ourselves, but it also um, attempts to look at what's happening in the world around us. And so to that extent, the question becomes for each of us, and it's a little different in each community, who are the people in the larger community who might have perspectives that are important for us to consider? Um, I overheard a bit of a conversation the other day um, with a school who was talking about whether or not they should be opening um, satellite early childhood centers as feeders uh, for their uh, grade school. And there was some conversation about schools being closed in certain neighborhoods by the school district because of the population. And that meant that space was available. Well. Does that mean that there aren't families in those neighborhoods and it's not a productive place for us to go after? Or, you know, what are the fuller implications? So maybe a conversation with some school board officials would be helpful in terms of informing our strategic planning process. Mm -hmm.